Now that we've seen the five stability factors, we can return to some questions about resonance that we left open in a previous video series. Specifically, the questions are, given a single true molecule, which resonance structure of that molecule is most important? And the related but different question, which of two distinct resonance structures is more important to its respective molecule, where the true molecules and the resonance structures are structurally related, but they don't correspond to the same true molecule? As an example of the first situation, we might ask, for example, for the 4-mamid molecule, which resonance structure is most important to 4-mamid? The one in which all atoms are neutral, or the one in which oxygen bears a negative charge and nitrogen bears a positive charge. Which of these two is most important has deep implications for the nature of the true molecule and the reactivity of formamid. The second question focuses on distinct resonance structures associated with different true molecules. So we could ask, for example, about an oxygen analog of the formamid molecule, formic acid, and look at a resonance structure in which formic acid has a negative charge on one of its oxygens and a positive charge on the other. Compare this with the dipolar structure of the formamid molecule, and you'll see that an interesting question here is, which of these two is more important to its respective molecule? The structure of formic acid, in which we have two opposing charges, or the structure of formamid, in which those two corresponding charges also exist? By answering this question, we can address the relative properties of the formic acid and formamid molecules. Recall from our earlier discussion of resonance that what we call the true structure of a molecule, its quantum chemical structure, is the result of weighted combinations of what are called resonance structures. We can give to each resonance structure a weight, which I'm going to denote W on this slide, and what this refers to is the importance of that particular resonance structure to the true structure of the molecule. You'll hear many different terms used for this concept of importance. Stability is a popular one, but truth be told, importance is the most correct term to use because all of the other terms imbue a kind of reality to the resonance structure that it doesn't have. So I'll rigorously use the word importance when referring to the contribution of a resonance form to the true structure of the molecule. Structural properties of the true molecule depend on this weight so the weight really does represent how important the resonance form is to the true structure. We can use the formamid molecule as an example of this. As it turns out, if you do a natural bond orbitals calculation of the formamid molecule, you find out that the best description of the molecule involves about a 70% weight to the neutral structure on the left and about a 30% weight to the structure on the right. Calculations of the structural properties of formamid can now use these weights. For example, if we're interested in the CN bond order, all we have to do is multiply the 70% weight of the left-hand structure times the bond order between C and N in that structure, and add to that the weight of the second structure times the bond order in that structure, which is 2, to arrive at the overall bond order of 1.3. Partial charges also use these weights to some degree, as do any other structural properties derived from the quantum mechanics of the molecule. In some cases, we draw resonance forms that put charge on distinct atoms, but nonetheless are superimposable. And an example of the allyl anion shown here highlights this effect nicely. The two resonance forms, strictly speaking, have negative charge on two different carbons, but the two structures are superimposable. We call superimposable resonance forms equivalent and they have equal importance. In the case of allyl anion, the true structure is 50% the left-hand resonance form and 50% the right-hand resonance form. Because the two structures are identical in a superimposability sense, one can't have greater importance than the other. In this particular case, the fact that the two resonance forms are equivalent tells us useful information, specifically that the molecule is characterized by equal partial charges at the terminal C's, that is, at the outer C's, and carbon-carbon bond lengths since the bond orders of both CC bonds must be equal to 1.5. Although a natural bond orbital calculation provides us with a fairly rigorous way to obtain resonance weights for a molecule, what we'd like to be able to do is qualitatively assess the importance of resonance structures. And now that we've seen the five stability factors, we can do this. The most important in terms of assessing resonance forms are electronegativity, hybridization, and inductive effects all of which affect the stability of electron pairs within Lewis structures. Let's look at some general guidelines on this slide 
and some examples of these guidelines in action. The first guideline is that more important structures have fewer formal charges and more bonds. And these two ideas often go hand in hand. As an example, the carbonyl group is commonly depicted using a dipolar resonance form in which the electrons in the CO double bond have been pushed up to oxygen. Although the right-hand resonance structure does give us insight into how the carbonyl group reacts, the left-hand stru structure is far more important, since every atom obeys the octet rule in this structure and all atoms are formally neutral. Our second guideline is that more important structures have negative charge on more electronegative atoms and positive charge on less electronegative atoms. This is almost identical to the phrasing we used in the electronegativity stability trend. And as an example of this, we can compare the formic acid and formamide resonance structures that we looked at in the introduction to this video. The question we're asking here is which of these two resonance forms is more important to its respective molecule? The only difference between these structures is in the atom bearing the positive charge. And the key to the difference is electronegativity. Nitrogen is less electronegative than oxygen. Because that nitrogen is more stable with a positive charge, or stated equivalently, the nitrogen is a stronger electron donor than the oxygen is in the neutral resonance forms, the resonance form on the right is more important to the structure of formamid than the resonance structure on the left is to the structure of formic acid. An equivalent way of saying this, and an idea that we'll return to in a second, is that the n to pi star orbital interaction associated with both of these resonance forms is stronger, more stabilizing in the case of the formamid molecule than it is in the case of the formic acid molecule. A somewhat related idea uses the notion of inductive effects. More important resonance forms have negative charge near inductively withdrawing atoms and positive charge near inductively donating atoms. A great example of this phenomenon is found in the context of substituted alkenes. We could draw two resonance structures for the alkene shown here by pushing the pi electrons in the double bond to the left or to the right. The two resonance forms are provided here, and the thing to notice is that the CH3 group bound to one of the carbons of the alkene is going to act as an inductively donating group. It will donate electron density toward the other atoms of the molecule. Notice in the middle structure here that this donation will tend to stabilize the positive charge on the central carbon atom. However, in the molecule on the right, this donation seems to clash with the negatively charged lone pair found at that central carbon. The structure that fits the rule, as we've stated it here, is the central resonance form, which contains positive charge adjacent to an inductively donating atom. As a consequence, it's the more important of the two resonance structures shown on the right, with the neutral structure, of course, being most important of all. One last thing I want to mention here returns to our idea of resonance as an orbital interaction internal to a molecule. In general, the importance of a resonance form rises as the strength of the source and sink used to generate it increases. And we can think of that strength in orbital energy terms, higher energy filled orbitals and lower energy unfilled orbitals. One of the reasons we like to use this orbital interaction language is the same idea applies to organic reactions, as we'll see later in the semester.